what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide for pelagius in rise of kingdoms now as always this guide is going to be focused primarily on free-to-play players or low spending players but near the end of the video we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other options that you may have either really late into the game as a free-to-play or as somebody who maybe spends a little bit more money in the game now if you've seen my other videos you've heard me talk about Pelagius a lot you've heard me mention that he is my favorite cavalry commander in the epic tier and we're going to talk about why that is and that's why I made this video before I made one for like Bivars or Belisarius or something like that because I really really love Pelagius and I think he's a great commander um not just for free to play but for a lot of people I mean I even see um bigger spenders who you know they want a second cavalry march and Pelagius is their go-to so let's talk about why Pelagius is so popular and so good um I have actually been seeing a lot of buy bars in my kingdoms kill events and I think I know why that is but we'll talk about that in a little bit um the first thing that i want to talk about is the three um talent trees that we have here for pelagius obviously he's a cavalry commander that's what we talk about him with um he also surprisingly has the garrison tree and the skill tree now i've had people ask me about hey what about pelagius should i put him on my wall and my answer to that is you know maybe he would be a great garrison commander maybe as a secondary really early in the game um if you don't really have that many good options then yes of course Pelagius is a great commander um but I think around the mid game to late game is when you want to take him off the wall I don't think he's really great there um he does do some nice single target damage but unfortunately his fourth skill uh, I just don't think is really great on the wall we'll talk about that in a second so let's talk a little bit about how can you get Pelagius well if you started the game and you picked the Spain civilization which is what I currently am then you will have started the game with Pelagius I think he's a fine choice he's a great commander to have right off the bat probably not the best commander to start with just in terms of what you're going to really need in the beginning of the game but he is a great commander nonetheless definitely one of the better picks if not the best um so with that being said um there's other ways to get Pelagius now of course there are certain events that come around for the Spain civilization where you can do certain things and it'll give you um, items that you can redeem for Pelagius sculptures you also can get Pelagius in the in the um tavern so you can actually get him from silver chests you won't get a summon from this but you could get a few sculptures here and there of Pelagius you also have the chance of summoning him directly from the gold chests as well which is really nice you also have the uh, option of getting him in the expedition metal store so sometimes he shows up down here right now we have the other two cavalry commanders but not Pelagius um and then this epic commander right here will change I think every week um and eventually it'll land on Pelagius where you can just buy as many of him as possible if you want throughout that week um so that's a really great way that you can get him as well of course you could also convert your universal commander sculptures into him if that's something that you want to do um I would probably focus more on Sun Tzu and Joan of Arc first and then maybe Pelagius after that wouldn't be a bad idea there's tons of events that get you universal epic commander sculptures so with that being said um once you have Pelagius you want to actually max his first skill first and we've talked about this in pretty much every video covering commander skills um for every commander except for the gatherers the first skill is pretty much the best one that you want to go for and a low and lohar might be an exception but that's kind of a weird scenario um most commanders you want this first skill maxed and the reason for Pelagius is because this has a rage requirement of a thousand it deals a direct damage factor of 300 to the target and then deals an additional damage factor also a 300 to the target each second for the next two seconds so that's 300 and this is 600 over two seconds so that's a total of 900 damage factor which is pretty good then he restores 100 rage so every time this goes off he's going to restore 100 rage which is really really awesome that's a really nice skill um if you look at somebody like Boudica, she also has a similar um rage restoration she gets 50 rage every time she uses a skill but Pelagius gets 100 so that just straight up is better which is really awesome his second skill is straight up giving you cavalry attack and defense now once you expertise him uh, the second skill is normally 10 attack and 10 defense but once you expertise him it's 15 and 15. so that's pretty standard in the epic tier 15 percent attack 15 percent defense a total of a 30 percent buff 
to your cavalry army which is really awesome his third skill is for being on the garrison so unfortunately this is not really going to be applicable in the open field but he does give the garrison and watchtower seven percent attack when he is a garrison commander um again i don't recommend that and the reason is because his fourth skill the mutineer troops normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to heal some slightly wounded units healing factor of 450 every second for two seconds so that's a total of 900 healing factor which is really good that's really good um and he's only an epic commander and that's still really good now this skill is really uh the reason that i don't like pelagius on the wall and the reason for that is because when somebody's attacking your city um you are going to be healing the troops in your city with pelagius's skill and when someone's attacking you you're not getting deads until your hospital is full and if you're converting slightly wounded units back into units that can fight what's going to happen is you're actually going to deal more damage to the enemy sure but um there's a chance that those go back into severely wounded and so once you fill your hospital then you're starting to get deads and essentially what this is going to do is you may be dealing more damage but you're also filling your hospital faster because you have more troops that are going back onto the battlefield to fight and so if you heal your hospital faster that means you're gonna reach the point where you get deads faster and honestly i'm just not a fan of that um it's up to you if you want to if you're gonna pay close attention and you really are, are like ready to pop like a peace shield or something or whatever the case is um you know maybe you could put a healer on your wall i just don't think it's a great choice because if you're caught off guard and you're offline it's going to be worse. You're going to have more deads than, than not, right? If you just had somebody not healing on your wall. However, this skill is really good in the open field. This is a really good skill when you're fighting in the open fields because it will actually turn your slightly wounded units back into troops that can fight, right? So the, the thing with slightly wounded units is when you're fighting and you see your health bar going down, um, it's not that it's going down because you're putting units in the hospital, which you're putting some of them in the hospital, but a lot of your troops are actually unable to fight until your commander goes back to the to the uh, your city and those slightly wounded units immediately turn back into troops that can fight and so what this does is instead of having to go all the way back to the city to refresh your troops some of those troops are just going to turn back into fighting troops out on the open field when this skill goes off now of course you're still going to be taking damage because you're going to be in a fight so essentially what this is doing is adding a little bit of tankiness to your pelagius army right because it's kind of padding the damage that you're taking um it depends on how often this goes off there is no it doesn't look like there's any cooldown according to the text i don't know if there's one hidden within the the game files or something um but with there being no cooldown, you do have the chance of healing a lot of troops with pelagius which is going to be really great for slowing down the amount of damage that you're taking even though he's an epic commander he still has a really nice healing factor on this fourth skill which is awesome and we also already talked about the expertise just buffing this second skill so as you can see he's one of the few commanders that i did bring to level 60 because even if I have a better cavalry army out on the field, if I want a second cavalry army, Pelagius is a really, really great option. So even if you guys aren't free to play, Pelagius is still probably going to be a commander that eventually you'll want to use as a primary. Um, so he's a really, really great choice. Let's talk about some talent builds for Pelagius. Now, if you remember, we did show you that his first skill gives you 100 rage, which means he has a built in rage engine. So with that being said, we can capitalize on that strength by putting all of our points into the skill tree, right? What that's gonna do is that's gonna get you Feral Nature, which will give you a 10% chance to get a grant an additional 100 Rage on top of the Rage that you're rejuvenating from the Talent Rejuvenate. You get 60 Rage anytime a skill goes off. Clarity is gonna be great for dealing more skill damage, which is awesome, as well as a couple of the other talents in here, like Tactical Mastery, which is really, really cool. We also have Burning Blood for more Rage Regeneration, but of course, you need to get this in order to get this. So that's why I'm not, I usually don't cover the, the middle ones you can read those if you want to know exactly what they do but they are useful um latent power is also a good option because it enhances additional skill damage and two-thirds of pelagius's primary skill is additional skill damage um so that's a kind of a really great option to have there next we made our way up into the cavalry tree um we did put one point into emblazoned shield which was reduces the skill damage that you take by three percent we also came over here and grabbed undying fury because it's another rage engine so you're gonna get nine additional rage for every normal attack so that's kind of stacking on top of everything we have in the skill tree here 
we also grabbed dragon saber which is normal attack nothing crazy there this does more damage to archer units and that's really what you want to do if you're in the open field and you see a kusanoki or a herman or something like that you want your uh cavalry army to attack that archer army we also grab charge um which is good we also have I don't know how to say that which increases your cavalry health by three percent so this is the build that i'm using um i've shared this in previous videos i really like this build because this focuses on having his active skill go off as many times as possible because his active skill does a decent amount of damage and it restores rage and so the more his active skill goes off the more it's going to go off again up to whatever the in-game soft cap is for rage regeneration obviously this could spiral off into infinity if it's uncapped so i'm sure there's a cap on it at some point um i don't know what that cap is if somebody knows comment below but with that being said his rage engine is really really cool so with that being said we're focusing on him dealing skill damage right obviously you want him with a full cavalry army i think pelagius is a great option for free to play players because you have some different options that you can pair him with now if you're not entirely free to play you could pair him with a minamoto i would recommend a 5511 minamoto that would be the best pairing for plagius as a low spender however if you are free to play i think another great pairing is buy bars and the reason that you're seeing a lot of buy bars or at least the reason that i'm seeing a lot of buy bars is because um his first skill reduces your enemy's march speed by 50 percent for two seconds so what's really awesome about pelagius as an army that you can have in the open field even if he's not your primary damage dealing army he will be able to deal decent damage with his rage engine and heal some while he's on the battlefield and if you bring buy bars along you have not only a really powerful aoe right like this a thousand damage factor can hit up to five targets that's more damage factor than Pelagius's entire primary skill and it can hit five things at a time which is super good on top of that you're reducing their march speed by 50 percent and you can use this Pelagius army to slow down an entire field of players which is really awesome the reason that you want this is because your t5 teammates might be able to catch up to you then and help you out in the battlefield you might be able to bring your slower armies into the fight so if you have a, a sun Tzu army that's lagging behind because they're mostly infantry um, you can slow them down with this army and then finally you can catch up to them and start to deal massive damage in a group fight um, it's really great to have that utility on the battlefield uh, not only for yourself but you could be helping your teammates as well um, on top of that if somebody's chasing down your teammate you can try and catch up to them with your cavalry remember cavalry are the fastest troop type in the game so you can catch up to them and try to slow them down a little bit so maybe your teammate can get away um there's a ton of utility in being able to not only deal a decent amount of damage heal your troops you also have aoe with buy bars that's a really powerful aoe and on top of that um you do actually get some uh healing factor with buy bars it's not that much but it does you know work a little bit with it does have that synergy with what um Pelagius is already doing and you get 50% March speed for 10 seconds when you leave battle but aren't routed uh, so that's something that's really really great to have if if it if this goes off when you're trying to get away from an enemy um, you you do have a, a good chance of getting away especially if they're slowed from buy bars for a couple of seconds which is really really awesome and on top of that buy bars is just straight up buffing your cavalry attack by 20% so I honestly think that um, if you have Pelagius he's level 60 or close to it and he's he's expertise I think buy bars as a secondary is a no-brainer i mean this is great synergy super good on the battlefield and even if it's not your primary cavalry army um it will be great utility as a backup cavalry army as well now you could pair him with belisarius the thing with belisarius is that he doesn't deal as much damage and he doesn't have the utility of the slowing effect as buy bars he also doesn't have aoe his damage factor is very small but what he does do is apply a two second debuff to whoever you're attacking so it's something to consider um, if you're severely outclassed by your opponent then I think that this is not really a great option regardless um, you do have a 30% buff to defense of cavalry units and a March speed of 50% when you leave battle so that's the same pretty much same thing as um, uh, by bars um, he also gets a uh, 25% damage increase when his army is below 50% so Belisarius you know on paper he's a he's a great pairing um, and you know maybe I'm not giving him enough credit there could be you know proof that he's 
as good or better than buy bars but personally i think you know when you're when you're talking about cavalry units you're not really talking about the tankiest of units like yeah you do have the healing factor with pelagius um but really what you want to do is just deal as much damage as possible i mean that's that's kind of my philosophy for cavalry um i'm, I'm never really looking for a super tanky cavalry army or a super like debuffing cavalry army right I think you can do a lot of uh, debuffing with a like a Sun Tzu Ethel Fled March or something like that. Um, I really do think that by bars is the better option. But again, it's up to you. It depends on the scenario. There may be a scenario where you would rather be debuffing and uh, tanking in that scenario. Potentially, it, it, again, the thing with um, with commanders is they do not exist in a vacuum. And so there are certainly going to be times where you would prefer Belisarius over by bars. But if you're just starting off in the game, I think having a Pelagius primary buy bar secondary would be a really, really great option. Of course, you could do buy, bear, buy bars primary and Pelagius secondary if you wanted to. They have the same cavalry skill tree, so you could build them the same way if you wanted to. It's up to you. Um, but I really, we're talking about Pelagius in this video. Now, before I talk about some of the other legendary pairings that you could do, I do want to briefly touch on equipment because this is a comment that I've been getting a ton lately. Um, people have been asking me, what equipment should I have? What equipment should I have? And honestly, I think equipment is something that you really should focus on late game, like late T4, early T5. That's when you should be focusing on equipment. However, a lot of in Plagius's case, a lot of the low tier equipment actually does apply to cavalry units, which is awesome. So as you can see here, I have infantry breastplate. Um, this buffs cavalry health by 2%, which is awesome. We have Vanguard Halberd. This will increase cavalry defense and health um, 5% and 4% respectively. That's insanely good for a green tier item. Like, oh my God, so good. Vanguard Greaves gives you 4% attack and 1% health. Again, a green item that has two attributes, buff and cavalry, super amazing. We also come down here to edge boots, which will give you another 1% cavalry attack buff. And I was lucky enough to have it crit. So this is buffed by half a percent. So it's one and a half percent. Again, if you craft these and they do crit, I would recommend, you know, if it is a, a primarily a cavalry um, piece of equipment, obviously you want it to, if it crits, you do want it to go, um, you want it to go towards cavalry now i will say the vanguard um set if you have all of the set you actually get an additional buff as well so that's really good to know um i do think that the low tier equipment is really good for pelagius and again even if you don't have some of the greens even like if we go in here if you look at something like the um the sharp long sword this is like the easiest thing to craft and you straight up get five percent cavalry defense like that's really good that's really good um so if you don't have anything else put the sharp long sword on him that's totally something that you could do you also could do the course breaches this gives you three percent cavalry attack like why not right it's one of the easiest things that you could craft highly recommend it um but eventually you're going to want to make your way over to maybe some of the windswept things right because you do get a little bit of infant uh cavalry uh health here and march speed march speed is always good on cavalry which is nice and then the vanguard set of course here is just really really incredible now with that all out of the way let's talk about what happens if you have some other options other than buy bars right so again we mainly talked about free to play up to this point we did mention briefly minamoto if you are a low spender at a 5511 i think this would be a better secondary than buy bars of course if you want the slowing effect of buy bars or the aoe then you would pick him but um for single target damage minamoto is going to outshine buy bars for sure plus he also gives you the same 20 percent attack bonus but he also has the march speed bonus on top of that which is awesome and then he does have this warlord skill which has a 10 percent uh chance to go off which is awesome so that's a good option um if you are truly free to play and you do have Cao Cao that you got from the gold chests what you could do is make sure you get his first skill to five because this skill is insanely good really high damage factor attack reduction for uh, three seconds which is really nice and a march speed reduction which is what you would see with buy bars now it's not as strong as buy bars but it does last for an extra second so that's awesome so you get this to five and then really what you want to do with Cao Cao is bring them all the way to four stars right because you don't want this second skill if you're doing a pvp scenario this second skill is useless and so by bringing it to four stars you have a 66 percent chance of an additional skill going here and a 33 percent chance of it going here right so that's really what you want to do bring up five just five points in the first one then bring them to four stars and start adding more skills at that point 
once you get him to like five one three one or something like that then he would be better in my opinion than um buy bars now uh quick shout out actually chisco gaming released a really awesome video recently talking about when you should replace your expertise epics with unexpertise legendaries i'll try to remember to link that in the description below but if not check out his channel he has an excellent video it's really long but you can skip to the points that you think are most useful to you um and he talks about this this topic in depth for a lot of commanders so definitely uh shout out to him that was an awesome video but if you bring him to five one three one around that area would be when he starts to outclass buy bars um maybe even five one two two would be good as well um because if you look here this gives you an attack bonus of 20 percent at three points which is the same attack bonus that you get from buy bars so if you bring them to like five one two one then you have less attack bonus but a little bit extra march speed than buy bars so like is that a trade-off i don't know if 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 losing five percent of attack is is worth the four and a half percent of march speed probably not um and then you do have this 10 percent chance of deal of doing a 500 healing factor which is really great synergy with pelagius actually and restoring another 50 rage so this is really great even at just one to have this 10 percent chance is, is awesome but really you would want them to be like five one three one or five one two two or something like that obviously it doesn't matter what the second one is but the, I'm, we're just talking the lowest amount possible um that's what i would recommend of course we could also talk about genghis khan pairing him with Pelagius potentially now Genghis Khan is not somebody that you can get from gold keys you do actually have to get him from spinning the wheel but in the event that you are totally all in on cavalry like you are only going to focus on cavalry commanders in that scenario you may use universal sculptures on Genghis Khan and if you do I would say that a 5511 Genghis Khan would be a really great secondary to Pelagius and it's not outside the realm of possibilities that a free-to-play player could get that build right it's totally possible to get a 5511 Genghis Khan as free to play um it it's not going to be easy right it's not going to be easy to do that but you could do that of course you could do it um it just would take a little bit of dedication a little bit of time to get that to go off but his first skill deals a huge amount of damage for less rage than any other active skill in the game and then again his passive skill here will reduce the rage requirement uh needed for the active skill which is even better plus you get um march speed bonus which is super cool and then these two skills at one will just give you some skill damage bonus if you have uh above 30 percent or below 50 percent respectively so genghis khan is another option that you could do and of course um you could also do saladin now we're getting into the realm where it's less and less likely that you would have them as free to play because saladin you have to actually win a mightiest governor to get him or you have to wait until he shows up in card king and spend a bunch of gems to try and summon him and then you have to use your universals to get more skills up on him um that's something that you could do if you wanted to i just think that's a much less likely scenario than having um maybe a genghis khan at 5511 or a tsao tsao of course you could just if you got really lucky with gold keys you could have him at 5122 uh, and that would be like good to go right so those are some other options for your Pelagius primary army i think Pelagius is an incredible commander that you definitely should work on at some point in your journey on rise of kingdoms with that being said guys this video is way longer than i thought it would be make sure if you're new around here to subscribe to the channel i know a lot of you guys are coming back for these videos but you're not actually subscribed so if you subscribe and you hit that bell uh, you don't have to worry about coming and seeing if i upload it it'll just let you know every time i upload a new rise of kingdoms video if you have more questions about pelagius or maybe some of the pairings or some equipment or something like that drop them in the comment section below or you can join my discord to ask me over there there's a specific section for rise of kingdoms ask any questions that you want and i'll be happy to answer them of course my twitch is in the description below as well so if you see me live on twitch even if i'm not playing rise of kingdoms jump in ask me whatever questions you want and i'll be super happy to answer them for you don't forget to drop a like on the video before you head out and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace